Remember the SpongeBob episode, Squid's Visit? The one where SpongeBob tries to get Squidward to visit his house? Remember how extremely dark and creepy it was? Turns out that the ep this episode in particular has an original, much more dark, disturbing version to it. I was talking through an old video store one day when I found some SpongeBob DVDs. There were some DVDs like Nautical Nonsense and Sponge Buddies, Tide and Seek, Sea Stories, Lost at Sea, etc. But there was this one DVD that had caught my eye. It was a DVD called Scaredy Pants. I was a teenage Gary and other spooky sea tales. Like the other one, I, it was around $5, so I decided to buy it. Once I bought it home, looked at the episodes on the DVD. The episodes on the disc were Scaredy Pants, I was a teenage Gary, Graveyard Shift, Shanghai, Nasty Patty, Ghost Host, Squid Bob Tentacles, Nightlight, and Sponge Hinge. There were actually a few bonus episodes as well. Blackjack, Crabborg, Doing Funny Time, Funny Pants, and then Squid's Visit. I watched the full setup to the bonus episodes, and everything seemed normal. I then watched the bonus episodes, and once things seemed out of place. In some scenes, in episodes like Blackjack and Crabborg, the color looked as if it were filmed in olden times, like the 1960s, and would flicker a little bit. It looked like this. Uh, but other than that, it was normal, at least until I got to the last episode, Squid's Visit. Part 2, Squidward's Descent into Madness. I turned on the episode Squid's Visit, and the title card came up. But it rather looked eerie. For one, instead of a normal happy tune and played in the TV version, the sound played a disturbing tune that sounded as if someone was scraping along with the hard ground. I'll followed by a bang every few seconds. The title card showed the pineapple background, except that it looked ruined. It was covered in gashes and scratch marks as if it's something that just torn the pineapple's texture apart. Instead of the words Squid's, Squid's Visit being in their usual blue and white, they were actually black and red. The episode started off normally, with Spongebob constantly asking Squidward to visit him, but with Squidward saying no every time. But instead of looking for no answer, Spongebob steals Squidward's vacuum cleaner like in the normal episode. And when Squidward comes to Spongebob's house, he finds that Squ Spongebob redecorated it to look exactly like Squidward's. Every room, every detail, every mark is correct. Every things go normally until in the episode until Squidward decides to take his for his vacuum cleaner for his, in his art room. This is where things really get disturbing. Once he enters the art room, the room is extremely dark. Though Squidward is still capable of seeing what is around him, an eerie wind chime like tune begins to play as Squidward looks at the portraits around him. And some of them looked slightly morbid. One of the paintings looked, shows a depiction and a feeble squid sweating over a bed and sobbing hysterically. One, one, another one displays a pale, thin Squidward with nothing but hollow sockets in his eyes, nose, and mouth should be. Another painting displayed the clown from the original episode, but with black holes for eyes that seem to be crying blood. Squidward sits on the center rug and he huddles in fears. He finds the closet and goes to open it, and instead of finding a pile of Spongebob stuff with the vacuum cleaner under it, like in the TV version, he finds a large stairway, leading into a cold, dark basement. Part 3, Together Forever. This is where things get truly disturbing. Squidward walks down the hall stairway to the basement, and what he sees is, an, is extremely eerie. He is standing inside a room with a dim ceiling light in the center of along with chains hanging from the ceiling. On the opposite side of the room is a rusty cage. He walks to it and there's a crude looking sentence engraved in the front. The inscription, though scratchy, said Harry friends forever. He looked inside the cage. It has a bared window and horrified to find that the remains of someone who was trapped inside the cage, with the interior filled with twisted and distorted drawings and writings on the wall. 
Squidward is even more horrified when he s sees that the name under Harry is his home. Squidward then tries to escape as fast as he can, but the all the doors are just locked. Just as he tries to escape the back door, Spongebob appears behind him, startling him. Spongebob looked psychotic, twitching and trembling as he walked. He had an unnerving smile on his face, and, t and he was holding a bloody butcher knife. Squidward. Please, let me out of here, Spongebob. Oh, I can't do that, Squidward. If I let you go, you will tell everything to the police, and nobody wants to that. And you can't escape me. I've barred every door, every window, every secret passage that you can have no chance of getting out. But now that you're stuck here, and once that I'm finished, we shall be close to, closer together forever. Squidward tries to break down the door, but it wouldn't budge. And Spongebob begins to cackle maniacally as he approaches Squidward, who is now huddling in fear. The camera pans away from Spongebob, but the shadows depicting Spongebob raise the knife in the air. He can be seen. Spongebob then pierces the knife into Squidward, causing a large graphic amount of blood to splatter in the wall, but we're suddenly cutting to black. But not without a horrible scream from the, from the poor supple lad, and the episode ended. I felt extremely uneasy by the time the episode was over. I was determined to find out its origins. How it all began, after com complaining what I just saw, it went back to the video store, with the DVD to find out where the DVD originally came from. I asked the store clerk about the DVD, and reluctantly, but willing to willing me to lead, led me to a back room. And this is where I learned the secret of how this episode came to be. The man originally worked with the writers of Spongebob Squarepants as one of the creators of certain DVDs. He even composed the DVD Scaredy Pants, I Was a Teenage Gary, and other spooky sea tales. And he told me that the version of Squid's Visit I just saw was its original and unaired version that was created way before it aired in Season 6. In late Season 5, after Black and Sponge and Mermaid Man, and Mermaid Man for just Spongebob aired in 2007, the writers wanted to make a new Halloween special for the upcoming month of October. They wanted to do something a bit different this time around. They decided to make a full 30 minute Halloween special along with four mo rather morbid episodes to follow it, but for some reason these episodes were delayed even though some of them were fully written. For fully written, recorded, and animated. The 30 minute, e the 30 minute episode was where Spongebob and Patrick so supposedly find a haunted house, ship, and meet and meet what was originally the Flying Dutchman's f first mate. The the 30 the 30 minute Halloween special was delayed, but it was later aired in season eight as Ghoul Ghoul Fools, and other and the four other morbid tales were released as, later as regular episodes. The four episodes were Planet of the Jellyfish season eight, Are You Happy Now season eight, One Course Meal season seven, and Squid's Visit season six. The three episodes P O T J AYHN and OCM stayed the same when they aired, but the same thing can be said for Squid's Visit. It turns out Squid's Visit was intended to be darker than it is today, but since SpongeBob was targeting a younger audience, the episode had either to be changed to be less disturbing or cancelled entirely. So the writers lowered the eerie tone to the episode and removed the scene where SpongeBob stabs Squidward with the knife change the paintings to look less scary, and change the scene where Sp Squidward finds the crusty, rusty cage to the scene where he finds a pile of Spongebob stuff with a vacuum cleaner under it. But even though the darker version never aired on TV, there are DVDs like the one I that include this special episode, though it's extremely rare. You come across a DVD like the, the one I bought and willing to watch the unaired version of Squid's Visit, just remember that after the DVD, the episode could haunt you for the rest of your life. And if you do have someone that holds a nerving obsession over you, you just be very wary. It could end up like Squidward, trapped inside a dark, cold, and isolated room, never to see the light of day, eventually being driven to, into the dark depths of insanity where you can never escape. And there's Squid's Visit alternated ending. What can I say about this story? 
It was bad. It was confusing, and it was absolutely cliched. There wasn't any explanation on why SpongeBob even Squidward even killed Squidward in the story. For one, the gore wasn't was unnecessary in this story. Uh, none of it was needed. But instead, the story offers SpongeBob to kill Squidward without explanation. And oh, with a knife, which speaking of which, two, a Jeb the Killer trope that has been used since that has been used many, 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 many times. A knife? Why a knife? This tool is in creepypastas have been done to absolute death. This is a cliche to be honest with you, and it doesn't make it a story that good. Third, one of the paintings in the story appears to have black eyes and crying blood. <sighs> a major cliche in many creepypastas in its bunt den, and it's been done to fucking death since Sonic.exe, it's not even fucking scary. Fourth of all, the crying cliche isn't even necessary, as one of the paintings, and I'm assuming this is a, ref re a reference to Squidward's suicide, a story I may, may on later on review if I can. Fifth of all, the warning of the DVD cliche. <clears throat> um, uh, I have heard of, I have heard this so many times in creepy pastas, and speaking of which. Six of all, the um, the um, the TV show or movie or game haunting you cliche. How many times do I have to hear this in a lost episode creepy pasta? It does not make any sense whatsoever, and that's pro that's a problem with the story. The only good part of the story is the fact it has good grammar. That's unfortunate because it can do better without having god awful cliche tropes that have infested this pasta. It's not even remotely scary or terrifying. To a little extent, I'm pretty sure the story was made a long time ago, but I'm going after it because it was absolutely terrible. None of this makes any sense whatsoever. I guarantee you the author has recently done better or he probably has quit writing. If anyone here made some terrible stories, you can obviously do better in the future. My final rating of the story is 1 out of 10. This was an absolute was an absolute cliched mess that needs some fixing later on. Yeah, it's pretty cliched and it was an absolute mess. Anyway, if you disagree with me, that's fine. We are entitled to our own opinions. Anyway, I'm out.